Hello beautiful people, this is Simply Oni. And today I wanted to talk to you about something that I think is very, very important, which is sodium lower sulfate. And I want to explain to you why sodium lower sulfate um, is not the best thing for you to use. In order to start this, I need to first tell you about a document called the Material Safety Data Sheet. And what the Material Safety Data Sheet, it's actually required by law for suppliers to provide it to their manufacturers so that they know at what levels to use ingredients, um, how to protect themselves while using this ingredient, um, more or less what to do when you become exposed to it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just gonna focus on the things that, can, uh, that affect us with the finished product. And the first thing I want to uh, pull up is, and you should be seeing, is section one. And section one is gonna talk about, number one, another name for sodium lower sulfate, which is sodium, sodium dodecyl sulfate. And actually there are over 150 different names for sodium lower sulfate. And the next thing I wanted to point out in this section is actually uh, the chemical name section. So the first thing that you see is sulfuric acid. And if you don't know what sulfuric acid is, Sulfuric acid, the best example I can give you is it's battery acid. Battery acid um, uses sulfuric acid at 38%. So 38% of the water that's, in, that's used in your battery has uh, a constant, that concentration of sulfuric acid. And if you've ever tried to refill your battery with water or um, been near your battery in your car, they always tell you, first of all, to use extra gloves and make sure nothing splashes on you because that battery acid can eat through your skin, your muscle, right down to your bone. And the only thing that stops it from eating the bone is the calcium that's in your bones. So when, and then when labs use it, they use it at 10% in the water. And even at 10%, they still have their safety goggles on, gloves and their coats and everything else to make sure they can't have contact with their skin. Cause if not, it will still eat, eat through skin and muscle. Number two, it's monododecyl ester. And monododecyl ester actually comes from coconuts or palm oil. And what they do is they strip out all the vitamins and nutrients and anything left in there that is not fat. And they concentrate the fat so that it is a, it is a stronger fat or stronger acid that comes out of oil. And then the next one is the sodium salt. Sodium salt by itself, if you breathe in sodium salt, it can actually cause respiratory or breathing problems and you have to take quicker breaths to actually get the same amount of oxygen that you would if you weren't exposed to it. Now that we know what sodium sulfuric, sodium laurel acid, excuse me, is, we want to know how much should be in our products. So we look at the next section, which is section 11. And section 11 is the toxico toxicological information. And I'm going through a couple different MSDSs on this one because some MSDSs, even though they're required by law, some people just put in the, some companies just put in the basics. Um, that way they have abided by the rules, but they don't put in enough information. And most of the time they get around it from just adding information for rats and rabbits and not anything pertaining to humans. But this one actually has a section on humans. And so we're going to take a look at this. And this is in the toxicology section. And we're going to go down to the irritation data. And right there it says um, human skin, how much should be exposed. And it says right here that it's 250 milligrams per 24 hours, which is a day. So how much is 200, uh, 250 milligrams? So if we change that to grams, it's actually a quarter or a fourth of a gram. And when we change it to something like ounces, which we normally see in our bottles or milliliters, which I didn't do milliliters, sorry. But if we change it into ounces, it's 0.00882 ounces per day is how much we're supposed to be exposed to. So even if we have a 16 or eight ounce bottle, it shouldn't even be 1% of what's in our shampoos. So you should never see it at, top, at the top of any list, maybe at the bottom of every list is where it's supposed to be at. So your next question is, okay, so now that I know it's over the amounts that it, um, they're requesting us to have, what are some of the effects that you know it's supposed to have on us? So I take you to another MSDS, and on this MSDS, it says assessment and usage of sodium lauryl sulfate. So when we look at this, <clears throat> it, it talks about the side effects. And one of the things is it affects the protein structure and keeps children's eyes from developing properly. It also may lead to cataracts due to the protein changes. And then the next one I want to point out here is the penetration into our systemic tissues, such as our brain, heart, and liver. Now, what's up with this protein changes? How does it even get to actually make these protein changes? 
The first thing is when you think of sodium lauryl sulfate, at the size of what sodium lauryl sulfate is, the molecular size of it, it's so small that it can go through your first layer of protection, which is actually your skin. And when it goes through your first layer of protection or your skin, it's still trying to do the same thing, which is clean. And since your skin, your hair, your brain, heart, liver, all those, not your brain, excuse me, but your heart and liver, all those things are actually proteins. And um, what it does is start to deplete or take away um, the amounts of proteins that are naturally in your skin and um, hair. So once it takes away those layers, your skin or your organs, such as your muscles and everything else, are left exposed to whatever the environment or the wind blows by your way. And depending on, um, on everything else that you do, you, you can get, yeah, you can see the effects um, more clearly. So imagine if you've already stripped away a lot of this protein that's in your body and using things like dyes or you're using chemical straighteners or chemical curlers or anything else, it has easier access into your blood system to get to places like your brain, heart, and liver. This is the reason why they tell you not to use chemicals when you're pregnant is because it has a straight route straight to your baby. So the next thing I want to point to you is going back to the toxicological information, but this is on our original MSDS. And the reason why I skipped over is because as you can see, they don't talk about anything with humans when it comes to the toxicity levels, they just point out rats. But below that, it talks about uh, the chronic effects on humans. And it says it has mutagenic effects. What exactly is a mutagenic effect? Mutagens are something that change the genetic information, usually in your DNA of any organ, of any organism, excuse me. And when it changes your DNA, your body can no longer recognize it. And that's why they say mutagens are typically carcinogens. Now, what carcinogens are, carcinogens are, are cancers, but they always say that not all mutagens are cancers. So once it actually starts to change that DNA by pulling out all those things, putting out, pulling out all those proteins in your skin and in, and going through your um, blood system or whatnot, um, there has been reports that it actually affects your estrogen levels. And when it affects estrogen levels, that's why you have, that's why I'm not saying that's the only reason why, but that's why things like PMS and uh, where's my list? That's why you have things like PMS, um, you develop early menopause, there's a drop in fer male fertility. And since estrogen is actually what, when you, your, your levels of estrogen drop, the higher your chances are in re um, getting things like breast cancer. The next thing that we want to point out, that I wanted to point out, is the list, the multiple amount of products that actually use sodium lauryl sulfate in there. And I'm going to leave this up a while um, while I talk because I was actually surprised at the amount of products that actually have sodium lauryl sulfate in it. So just because you're not using the shampoo does not mean that you're actually not exposed to sodium lauryl sulfate. And the reason why I'm doing this is just so that people can have an informed decision. I think it's very, very important that you make decisions off of, uh, off of what you know rather than what you do not know. And now it's time for my did you know. Did you know that there are over 50 different ingredients used in the cosmetic industry that has been banned from every other country besides the United States? Yeah, a little surprising. I've actually attached a link here on the right hand side so you can take a look at it. And um, they list by country the products that, they do, that um, are banned, um, the name of the product in the center, and on the right the chemical that they don't want in their country. And it's no surprise that the same chemical keeps appearing in every country. So I thought this would be pretty useful for you guys. So I hope this has been very educational for you. And thank you very much um, and happy growing.